King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Being king means to be a monarch or ruler of a people. He who by his inheritance, dignity, or distinction is worthy of that title. In our times, there are not many monarchies, but these have always existed in all times, and show us a king above all his people. The image we have of kings is that they are people who live in luxury, much pomp, a lot of power and money. Jesus, the Son of God, was sent from heaven to rule over the whole human race, because he is the firstborn of God the Father. But the kingdom of Jesus as king is totally opposed to the kingdoms of the earth. His kingdom is a kingdom of humility, poverty, detachment from earthly things, which leads us to accept him as Lord, God, King and Savior. Jesus does not reign in us from outside, but from within, that is, from our own heart. Jesus is the Word of God, that is, God Himself who came down from heaven to become like one of us and establish the kingdom of heaven in our hearts. Pilate asked Jesus, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I have come to the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Jesus answered him in truth that he is king, that he is not of this world, but that he has come here to bear witness, witness to the truth. Because the truth is not in the world, but Jesus says that whoever is of the truth hears his voice, so that anyone who follows the truth accepts the kingdom of Jesus. There is a description of the king Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel. When interpreting a dream of the king, he exalts him as king, and this is a perfect description of Jesus, the king of kings. In Daniel we hear, You, your majesty, king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has given sovereignty, power, strength, and honor, human beings, wild animals, birds of the air, wherever they live, he has entrusted to your rule, making you king of them all. You are the golden head. The head of gold depicts the sacred head of Christ, throne of eternal wisdom, that here on earth was not crowned as the king that he deserves to be, but as a king of burlesque with a crown of thorns. Psalm 24 verses 7 to 10 speaks of Jesus as the king of glory. Gates, lift high your heads, raise high the ancient gateways, and the king of glory shall enter. Who is he, this king of glory? It is Yahweh, strong and valiant. Yahweh, valiant in battle. Gates, lift high your heads, raise high the ancient gateways, and the king of glory shall enter. Who is he, this king of glory? Yahweh Sabaoth, he is the king of glory. In the New Testament, St. Paul speaks of Jesus in his glory as God, as the King of Kings, in his first letter to Timothy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the due time will be revealed by God, the blessed and only ruler of all, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who alone is immortal, whose home is in inaccessible light, whom no human being has seen or is able to see. To him be honor and everlasting power. Amen. The Word tells us that no man saw, because no one has seen God in his glory, because we did not see Jesus in his glory as King. In fact, he came to this world to become a slave 
to pay for our sins. But in heaven, he is our king for all eternity. Jesus tells us that he is truth. Then those of us who belong to Jesus hear his voice. And listening to Jesus is to open the heart to the kingdom of heaven that he has come to give us. St. John speaks of Jesus in his glory and tells us about his battle against the world, the devil, the flesh, and death. They will make war on the Lamb, and the Lamb will conquer them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. St. John shows us in his vision of Jesus as a mountain rider on a white horse. And then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, he who sat upon it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name inscribed which no one knows but himself. He is clad in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, followed him on white horses. From his mouth issues a sharp sword with which to smite the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The kingdom of Jesus is within us. Jesus says in John 14 verses 21 to 23, He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Saint Teresa of Avila says, The soul is like a castle where the king lives, a castle made of a diamond of very clear crystal, where there are many rooms, just as in heaven there are many mansions, that if we consider brothers and sisters, the soul of the righteous is no other thing than a paradise where God says he has his delights. Well, how do you think will be the dwelling where a king so powerful, so wise, so clean, so full of all goods, delights. For this reason it is so important that we all can have entry to that inner castle of the soul to contemplate there the presence of our king. Many of us have received him in his entire splendor in the Holy Eucharist. He has entered his castle, but we have been left out and we don't know how to meet him. The reason is that we don't give the importance that he truly deserves, because in heaven all the angels and saints worship him and prostrate themselves before him, but we receive him as if it were just a piece of bread and we forget the great mystery of our King. I would like to speak to you about our King with this teaching I received from the Lord. Jesus speaks. Listen to this parable. A great king wanted to share his treasure with all his people. He sent his envoys to pass out his gift. The people rejoiced and received the gift of the king. But as they lived busy lives, they didn't give due attention to the gift, because they kept it 
in their closets, along with all the possessions they had. As the gift of the king was not so important, they put their needs first, their earthly pleasures, their wealth, their plants, their loved ones, their self-esteem, and many other unimportant things. Thus, they left the gift of the king on the back of the closet. What does the parable mean? Jesus says, I am the king, my treasure is my heart, my gift is my broken humanity on the cross that I offer to the Father and to all who desire salvation. The ambassadors are the priests, the gift is the Eucharist, and the heart is the closet of forgetfulness where many Catholics leave the heavenly gift. The many things that fill the heart and don't allow me to be in their first place are the false idols they enthrone in my temple. So I am put in a dark and unimportant place. My gift is eternal life. He who treasures it will have it, but whoever receives it without discernment is offending me. He who has ears, let him hear. Reflection What should the soul do during the reception of the Eucharist, the food of the soul? When food is ingested, an important point is the mental preparation, which prepares the body properly to receive food and take advantage of its nutrition. The soul must be prepared to receive the heavenly food with repentance, with a humble and contrite heart. Food should be eaten slowly, so that the process of digestion is perfect. Likewise, the Eucharist should be eaten slowly, pondering the great mystery that we are receiving and giving it all the honor it deserves. Digestion makes food nutrients pass into the body. Likewise, the meditation on the mysteries we receive in the Eucharist allows our souls to be purified with the precious blood of Christ and let His holy body bring health to our body and soul. We should not receive the Eucharist and go from that moment to other things without meditating deeply and reverently our heavenly gift. If we don't do spiritual digestion to the Holy Eucharist, it is as if we gave food to a dead body, knowing that food is not going to resurrect him. Many times Jesus' Eucharist comes into us and we ignore and despise him, instead of enthroning him in our hearts as our King and Lord, we despise him. We chain him and lock him up in the darkness of our hearts. The true kingdom of Christ in the soul is asked when we pray the Our Father. We say, Thy kingdom come. That is to say, we invoke Jesus our King to reign in our lives. Then we say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is it that we are really saying to Jesus? Jesus, I want you to be my king. I want the kingdom of the Father in my heart, the kingdom of his divine will. And what is the kingdom of this king of the divine will? In the same way as Christ, we say to the Father, not my will but your will be done. To live the will of our King is to accept all that He commands in our life. It is to give Him everything as a slave would do here in a kingdom to His King, including surrendering the gift of His life. To live the will of God is to accept all the inconveniences, hardships, diseases, problems, struggles, and all that God allows to happen in our lives without complaint. Remembering Job, the devil was envious of him, 
and God gave him permission to ruin him. He lost all his possessions, his beautiful daughters, his health, but Job did not protest. With humility and patience, he said, The Lord has given me everything. The Lord has taken it away. Blessed be the Lord. To accept Christ, our King, in our hearts, it involves a total surrender to His will and His commands. It also calls us to look for Him in our hearts, to worship Him, and not abandon Him when we receive Him Eucharistically. The Kingdom of Christ doesn't come alone. It comes also with the reign of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the Sovereign Queen of Heaven and all creation, also the Queen of our hearts. Let us open our hearts to the King and the Queen, to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If you like this video, please share it, give us a like, please subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed, and we would also appreciate your comments. God bless you.